Hi, Cizrin here with another video for the upcoming Necropolis League, and this is going to be a video covering lots of different Atlas strategies. So if you haven't heard, we are getting three Atlases that we are able to use and switch between them on the map device. Now this looks super cool, but we are going to need to have, you know, substantially different Atlas trees to really like take advantage of that and make a lot of well, whether if you're solo cell fun or whether you're trade league, you know, to get what you want. I'm going to start off by showing how to unlock your atlas as fast as possible and some quick tips there. And then we will have lots of different trees that are timestamped and I will go through them, explain a little bit of basically what they are. And then I'll be showing what I am planning myself. Also, if this video helps you have a great league start, please consider subscribing. It does help me and my team out a lot. So one thing that's really great is whenever you're getting Atlas missions from Kirik, which I don't even think you get the daily one anymore, but you will be able to get Atlas missions and there are points that give you a higher percentage to get the Kirik Atlas missions. And these will still play a great role in map completion. Now there's some really cool Kirik tricks that you should know about. So first off, when does Kirik reset the maps that he sells? And you can hold alt to see if any of these are not completed. Well, he resets every time you open another mission. And these are worth looking at, not just for completion, but also for the rewards. Sometimes they can give a full stack of divination cards and some of the things they change that bind can be very common and that can give you an early six link. Now, another quick tip, because this is not something you can go back to later because their Atlas progression is permanent. Um, now, this isn't mentioned in the patch notes or something, so I'm assuming it's still in. But if you have one map uncompleted on your atlas, so let's say that we have um, Crimson Temple or one of the maps that drop uh, Taste of Hate Divination card. Well, what we can do is if we have one map uncompleted, every time you click an Explorer Scouting Report, all of the Karak missions will only give that. So you have a pretty big chance of getting the fine full stack of Divination cards. And this was used especially on Solo Cell Phone to get some of the Div cards you want. Now, nothing was mentioned of that in the patch notes, so let's just assume that it's working for 324. Another interesting hidden strategy is that Kerak will sometimes offer you a white or a yellow map, but corrupted and rare. Now, if the base of this map is a red map, you can actually, let's say that Arcade is naturally a tier 16 in 324, we could actually do this yellow tier 10 Arcade map, which is rare and corrupted, and get the completion. Again, there was nothing in this in the patch notes, so this might be an intended strategy and hopefully works in 324. And not a lot of people know about it. And it's a great way to get your red corrupted maps while fighting easier maps. So obviously Kirik is quite strong and you can buy loads of useful maps from him. But there is a final tip I want to share with you for your new quest of finishing the Atlas. So the specific maps is going to be slightly different. But if you see when I have no void stones in, like, there are a few different tier 1 maps, but there are quite a lot of different tier 2 maps. For example, Glacier is connected to Dunes, etc. However, these connections don't really matter for what I'm about to show you. So if I sell these three Glacier maps, no matter what combination I put these in, they will always be a Forking River. However, if I switch one out, now they're selling for Infested Valley. Now they're selling for Port. Now these three are selling for Core. So by playing around with these combinations, because each of them have a unique item ID in the database, they aren't like currency where they just, you know, meld together. Um, you can play around with this. And when you have something like between seven and nine different maps, you're able to get anything of a tier above. So I'm now going to start going through trees. We made quite a lot of different ones. I'll mention what they do. We have an early tree and a late tree. Now there are some things we just don't know about. And there are some things that like we don't know the drop rate of scarabs. So with things like that, we might just have to adapt on the fly. But there are a lot of things we know. So that's what we're going to talk about and explain a few of the different nodes and what the tree is good for. So Expedition, this is really good for getting a lot of currency, getting high item level bases for crafting, and you can craft with Rog, and you can get some different item level bases with Gwenin as well, although she's not as prone to giving good uniques as she used to be. Um, there are some things to keep in mind, like Extreme Archaeology. This is something that you might not need or not, might not want, depending on the power of your build and how much you're affected by the immunity. It's like, oh, I just took a fire immune and now I can't do anything. However, some builds are going to be less affected by this. Now, a new thing that is coming this time is the Unwavering Vision. And this is why we're using that early, because we don't know the Scarab drop rate. And 20 Atlas skill points early on is so huge. And 
Scarabs is most likely going to be something I'm going to mostly use for juicing in red maps, and we will quickly learn about the scarab drop rate so we can adjust a little bit on the fly there. Now on each tree, we're taking things that buffs us the character to give us an easier time to progress and clear. So on this tree, that is Nico, and it's for this, the Pact with Energy. This is especially really nice later on when you're fighting Elder Guardians and stuff like that. You'll get plus three max risk and loads of damage, so, and movement speed. Like, this is such a nice node, and a lot of people will be here. And you can pick up some extra Nico chance if you want it 100% of the time on your maps. Jen is really nice. A lot of people will be searching after Veiled Crafts. A lot of people will be searching after Veiled Orbs. And a lot of the different drops from Katarina and also things like Paradoxica is quite nice. However, do remember Betrayal can be a little bit convoluted and hard to understand. So completely understandable as if you're a new player and that's not something you want to deal with. I do have a fairly outdated Betrayal guide with concepts are still the same, but the rewards of what things do has been changed this league. Later in the league, I am going to put a more comprehensive Betrayal guide that'll explain things better and have the up-to-date rewards. Now, this is the late version of the tree, and you can see that it has more points, etc., 112, and we're getting rid of this because, you know, we do have enough points now, and maybe the Scarab drop rate was really good, and we want to start finding them. The mining byproducts, this is really good because you might not want to delve. However, by grabbing this, you're getting a large amount of Azerite, and you can now use that Azerite to either upgrade and, and get ready to delve, or what most people do is they use this as a right to buy the resonators to sell to other people. So you're just making a nice extra passive income from this. Now we are avoiding this node. Obviously it can be nice with increased rarity and stuff. However, the fact that they have additional equipment when appearing in maps make them insanely dangerous and can do things like petrify. Now on this late version of the tree, you can also see that you have a lot of the harvest nodes because that is such a good resource to sell in Trade League, and you will make a lot of currency. You can also use this in Solo Cell Fund for crafting, so honestly, this tree can be pretty good for either. We do have a third version of this tree, because on a softcore player, might not want Expedition, but they might want Legion. So, we have this tree for softcore players that instead of going Expedition and you don't want to deal with it, you don't want to blow up those things, you can farm Legion instead. You could either sell the Splinters or you could farm for the different uh, Glorious Vanities, etc. and sell those to other players. So you have a lot of different choices here, but these three trees are um, all connected together. We will have them linked in the description. So this tree that we're about to see, it's going to see Blight, Essence, Heist, and the late tree will have Alva. So. This is a left side tree early, and part of the idea is you do want to try to take things that are close together and combo things. You don't want something that's like, you don't want this, and then like, you know, we do have the gateways to travel easier, but um, there are a lot of pathing things that still make sense and taking together. And one of the things we're doing here for extra power is we're taking Huck. Now, Huck is basically whenever you click a smuggler stash, and obviously, Grabbing and, and clicking a lot of smuggler stashes can be so nice because you're going to be getting loads of blueprints and especially in software trade league, these end up selling pretty well at the higher levels and they're just very useful for a lot of the different replica uniques and the bases. Like there are loads of different rare bases, the experimented items, and they will sell because there's so many builds that use different things like Secret of Suffering Scepter, Elemental Overload Scepter, etc. Now, Huck is really strong because what he does is he offers you one additional aura. So you can use this piece of gear and you can roll it and you can be like, well, I'm an Essence Strain build, I need Malevolence for free and I want that. Although maybe you want something that is just like a nice extra benefit that you're not already running yourself. So haste is very easy to roll and you just slap that on every build and boom, you now have free haste in maps. So Blight, super great, so much currency early on. Everybody needs to anoint their gear and not all that many people actually want to farm it. What you want to do here is anytime the uh, league has something like, you know, uh, waste pool, carcass, any map. Uh, this time we have toxic sewers is probably going to be one of the best ones, but ideally you want to be in a tier 13 to tier 16 map. Like tier 16 is great for this, really, if you are farming the high. Um, but you ideally want to be able to get gold oils and you want to be in a really cramped together map. Now, this might be a little weird compared to a lot of people like, you know, the really smooth layouts, open layouts like dunes and stuff like that. However, not everybody knows that blight is really bad in open layouts like dunes. The plant will like spread out and you're only going to get like one blight reward. However, what can happen in maps like core, carcass, you know, the really cramped together ones, if it spawns in a really narrow corridor, it could actually branch out and do 13 of one reward. Now, why is this good? That's because all of the rewards from that one path share the same reward. And if there's only one, they are forced to be blight rewards. So you will actually get like 
Honestly, like one time I had six blight maps from one normal map and, and having a blight in there. So these can be super good and make you so much currency early on. Now, this is particularly good for builds such as Deadnate Dead, where you can easily do blight ravish maps early because you get so much damage from the corpse scaling. Now, I do have a lot of guides for Blight and stuff, but I think it's Indigo and Violet is the Meteor enchant, and Opalescent and Silver is the really good Freeze enchant. So those two makes Blight maps pretty free on most builds. Now, you can see that we have Essence as well in this, and Essence has been extremely popular in past leagues. Now, a thing that's changed is that before, you could spam Essence with all the nodes and using the map device one, maybe, and now Scarabs, you could do that in tier one maps before, and you would get the same reward as in tier 16 maps. However, now you will have to do at least tier six maps because that's when you can get Shrieking Essences now. So that's changed a little bit. It's pretty okay. However, obviously, Essences are pretty dangerous if you're going into red maps, tier 16 essences can be very dangerous early on, so make sure that you have a very potent build for this. And here you can see the late tree, which also has Alva. I'll probably be remaking my Alva guide. I do have an old one, but there are some things that are changing with the new scarabs and stuff, so I want to make a new one up to date there. But the old ones are still pretty okay for making your own temple, and you're generally looking for things like double corruption chambers and gem corruption chambers. So TLDR, lots of money from Blight, Decent money from Heist, either whether you're running it yourself or selling the blueprints to others. We're going to be picking up a lot of currency with this tree. So here you can see another right side tree, and this is Essences, Boxes, Harbinger, Nico, and in the late one, we're going to have Breach. Now, this is a tree that really will require you to have a bit of a better build. Breach and um, Essences are both pretty scary, and you will actually need to, you know, have decent clear speed and stuff like that. Now, the boxes are also particularly here because we don't know how map sustain is going to be this thing. Um, you can see we have the Keurig nodes in the middle as well, so this could be a really good alternative there. So the theory of this build is it's breach with things to do while the breach are opening because uh, you can run around. You can have faster breach nodes as well. However, you'd probably need a pretty giga build uh, for that on day one. In the end game one here, you can see that we have two fairly dangerous nodes, Call of Seshed Ula and we have Crystal Lattice. Now these are pretty dangerous, so you are going to need to make a judgment call if your build is powerful enough to handle this. Another thing that's dangerous about this tree is Harbingers. They can definitely be deadly and kill you pretty quickly. So again, you do want a solid tree for this, um, a solid build, and hopefully you'll be able to handle it. But this could be pretty profitable, especially selling breach stones and stuff like that early. People want them for imitations. People want them for gear. And essences are pretty much always amazing. Now, you will also, for all the essence trees, know, need to know a little bit about making sure you have enough chaos to run essence on the map device. Another thing that's important with this tree is if you're running Essence, you want to make sure that you have enough chaos to run Essence on the map device. And here, this is a little bit more of an in-game tree, something you spec in after you've set up uh, using gear and whatever you've used from one of our other trees. This could also be a second atlas, but we don't fully know how we unlock them yet. Um, this is like for like farming scarabs and stuff like that, and we don't fully know. And it's also a bit of a boss rushing atlas. This is also a bit of a 10-way rushing atlas where you're like rushing for that and you can see that we have a lot of the different drops like getting conquerors, getting shaper maps, elder guardian maps, etc. Also very endgame because it does have a ruckus. Obviously you can have exiled will to make them possessed by tormented spirit. This is more of a softcore node. It will be extremely deadly. And in this atlas as well, we do have the Pact with Energy and High Delve spawn chance. Remember, you can pick up some more chance here as well. But getting that extra damage, extra speed, and max stress is going to be such a nice thing early on. Now, finally, what am I doing? So, um, I might be a little bit SSF brained. I'm probably going to rush up here, grab Unwavering Vision. I'm going to grab Jun. I'm going to grab Nico, especially like 100% spawn chance and packed with energy. Um, I'm most likely going to grab Expedition, but I'm not 100% sold on that. And I will probably grab Extreme Archaeology, uh, most of the Essence stuff. I haven't fully decided on everything. I've also considered taking Blight. Maybe this Atlas is a little bit too SSF focused. I am obviously very SSF brained because that is what I normally play. But there's loads of cool things I can do in Trade League that I can't normally do. Like sell like unveils or sell crafts to people, etc. So could be an interesting thing to do. Um, but I haven't fully decided yet. And this is something I'll play around more with and that'll be changing a lot. 
Now, finally, I do want to show off Path of Pathing because I thought it was really cool. Now, most of these trees are in PoE Planner and that's a tool we're used to using. However, Path of Pathing is basically just really interesting. I want to show it. So if I click Legion, it'll go and path to all the Legion nodes that exist. It doesn't care whether a Legion node is good or bad, but it does as pretty optimal pathing as it can for what you want. Then now, if I click on the Essence nodes, you see that it even changes So really interesting for me there that um, it tries to help you optimize for what you're having and you can click the ones you want. Now, word of warning here, when I was playing around with this and being a little bit sloppy, um, I did have a lot of nodes that weren't optimal and that I normally wouldn't use, right? There are some things that are a bit of a waste. And for example, we don't know what the price of progress is. The uh, the Doom Spirits, they might be really good. They might be really rippy. They, we just don't know. Um, so things like that are interesting and obviously taking things like pillage and plunder is very dangerous and hardcore but yeah path of pathing very cool tool um, very interesting just make sure that you have a rough idea what the nodes do and which ones you don't want i might make a separate video going over each mechanic all the nodes which ones are bad why they're bad and why they're sometimes good and things like that and just call a full like walkthrough of the atlas tree but either way, I'm Scissorin. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it helps you have a great lead start. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.